let's get into me taking my hair from this brown back to black. As we transition into warmer weather, a lot of people are getting color fever. They're wanting to take their darker colors lighter for the warmer weather. Now listen, I got bit by the same bug and today I am reversing that thing and I am going back to black, black, bliggly black. What's up, I'm Brandi Lucas. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, hey girl, hey. So, so a couple of months ago, I did something crazy. I put permanent color to lighten my hair on my already relaxed hair. I did a whole video sharing with you guys what motivated me wanting to do the change and the steps that I was taking to keep my hair as safe as possible as you can when you're doing something crazy like relaxing and permanent coloring. So permanent color and relaxer is a danger zone. So if you've been thinking about lightening your hair for the warmer weather before you do it, make sure you check out that video. I'll share with you guys the steps that I'm taking to safely turn my hair from this reddish brown color back to black. So if you're interested in the process of doing that, stay tuned. I'm using Influence, which is a salon level color, and I am using their one in. I've talked about in previous videos that I prefer to use neutral black instead of um, like a 1B color because of the base. That letter tells you the base of the color. And as the color fades, you'll either see like a neutral natural wearing off or you'll see blue if the base is blue. So I don't mess around with that. I am using a permanent color, but if you mix it with a lower volume, it can be a demi. So I'm using an eight volume. I got my brush because I am going from brown. So I need to be like thorough on this thing. Every inch and strand needs to be covered, my color bowl, and we're gonna get to mixing. Y'all know I am big on chemical services being done in the salon. When I say chemicals, of course that includes your color and your relaxers because color is a science. You see that I'm using a scale to measure the color. Um, a lot of color kits will give you developer and color already shake it up and go. While those are convenient, color and hairstyling as a whole is not a one size fits all. So I'm always cautioning anyone who's considering doing at home hair care to take into consideration that you do want your hair, your lifestyle, your uh, thickness, your all of the things that are particular to you to be taken into consideration when you choose chemical services. This is why I say at least those should be done by professionals. If you're maintaining your hair at home and struggling to get the results that you want, don't hesitate to schedule a virtual consult with me, brandylucas.co. Okay, so that's my disclaimer, but y'all know that I already know that some of y'all are gonna do this at home, so I wanna give you a little guidance so that you do it correctly. So the scale helps to measure the amount of color when it's not already pre-portioned out. So depending on the thickness and the length of your hair, you'll have to play around with this if you're doing it at home. But because my hair is super short and a lot of you guys who watch my content are rocking short hair, you can go a little bit less on the color in regards to how much length you have, but the thickness of your hair plays a big part. As you can see in the video, I used nine grams. This color is a one-to-one -one match. So you'll see me pour the developer to 18 grams. So it's equal parts, color and developer. I think uh, I ended up a little later in the video going back and adding some more color there is really no science to uh, gauging this if you're doing this at home you're going to have to see how far you can go but the rule of thumb is that it's a one-to-one -one match so if you use 10 grams of color you're going to use 10 grams of developer it needs to be equal parts of the color and the developer it's important that the developer and the color is completely incorporated in order for you get to get the results that you want. So you want to take some time here to make sure that one, you're using a applicator brush and that you're taking the time to make sure that all of the developer is mixed in with the color. Okay, of course I'm starting on um, clean hair. It has been 
shampoo and the first thing yeah I don't want to talk it was at this point when I realized that me properly doing this color and talking at the same time wasn't gonna work so here I am popping in with the voiceover Let me reiterate that the goal of this color is for me to not have this reddish brownish situation happening so I am going to apply the color to my entire strand mind you this is not the process that you would take if you are doing the opposite um, but for me trying to go back black this is the route that I'm going to make sure that I apply the color to my entire strand now this can go bad for those of you guys who had blonde hair uh, yellow tone blondes if you go in and just put black on it the likeliness of it being all the way black and not green is high so again I know I'm showing y'all this because I know that you know y'all do all of the things at home but color is a science and it could go real bad if you've ever had your hair turn green when you added black to it over a light color please comment below so that people know that i'm not just gassing y'all up and wanting to send y'all to the salon but i'm saying this because i want you guys to like know the right ways to approach things and get the best results as you can see, another reason why I highly suggest using a applicator brush is of course the bristles are going to allow you to apply the color very close to the roots of the hair so that you have uniform color throughout the entire hair strand. But as you can see, the tail of the applicator brush allows me to part through my hair and make sure that I am applying in sections. You cannot apply the product on the top of your hair. I don't care how thin your hair is or how full it is and expect for it to penetrate into every nook and cranny. You're gonna have to get up in there and the applicator brush is clutch for helping you do so. I got halfway through my head and like I told y'all when I was mixing, I did not mix enough color. So I had to go back and add a couple of more grams again equal parts of color and equal parts of the developer to finish the other side of my head i'm continuing the same process on the other side of my head i'm starting on my hairline because that's the place that if i still see even a minuscule amount of this reddish brownish situation peeking through I would be so salty at myself so I'm starting first where I can see applying like a thick layer on my hairline and uh, going around the back as well those are like the shorter areas of my hair so not very concerned about it penetrating through there and then you see as I get to the um, crown of my head I am starting again to section using the tail of my applicator brush. Once the color is thoroughly applied to the entire head, I'm still going through and making sure that I don't leave any strand out. So I'm like using the bristles of the brush to kind of paint on um, the color around my edges. Another reason why I love an applicator brush and not just applying color from a bottle is that you get to, of course, like press through and make sure that the color is being applied, but around your edges, you get to kind of paint it on in a wispy motion that gives you a more realistic, hairline rather than it just being like splotches of color on the edges if that makes sense to you so now that i have the uh, color completely applied i'm going through and making sure using my gloves that every single strand is covered because there is nothing like coloring your hair and still having the residual color peek through because it was not properly saturated just in this application process, you can see that the color is already starting to oxidize and the brown is fading away. We are fading to black. You hear me? And I am happy about it. 
you need to know that color starts to do its thing not after you get get it all the way on your head but the moment that the color is mixed so once you put that developer with that um color the time starts ticking so keep that in mind so for this demi permanent color i'm going to wait 20 minutes for it to process in the event that you're not using a demi permanent color you could also achieve the same effect with either a rinse which i'm not a huge fan of but it'll work or a semi-permanent color now what color is the best color for you depends on your individual hair situation in order for me to give you professional guidance i need to know more about your situation but at the end of the day i know you guys want to know whether you should use a rinse a semi or a demi so your girl got you i created a quick color guide it'll help you figure out based on your situation what is the best route for you to go to color your hair we're done doing one size fits all and we're done taking one person's route and making it our own so if you want to know the best route based on the color your hair is right now your lifestyle your diet what is the safest way for you to achieve your color goals then don't hesitate click that free guide that i created for you guys because it'll give you the insight that you need to make the best decision for you all right all right all right i am so happily back to black I have my conditioner on right now. I'm gonna allow that to sit for about 20 minutes. I actually might throw a cap on and throw my hat back on and let the conditioner sit all the way until I get home. But I am so happy. My hair is still wet and I can already see the sheen. One of the things that I noticed about my hair when I was rocking it lighter was that it did not have the sheen that I'm accustomed to having with wearing my hair black, black, bliggity black. So I'm excited about that. We back. If you're thinking about going from light to dark or dark to light, then you need the color guide that I put together for y'all. Go ahead into the description, tap the link and get a copy for yourself. It is completely free. And you're gonna wanna stick around for the next video where I take this freshly black hair and mold it and give y'all the tea on the products that I'm using for my summer hair care goals.